Artificial intelligence is already changing our lives in a huge way, just like the smartphone did and the personal computer before that. So in this episode, I'm gonna highlight some of the latest investing research on AI and show you which companies could dominate this $100 trillion market opportunity. By the way, that's roughly four times the size of the US economy today. So you don't wanna miss this. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I think it's important to understand the science behind the stocks. Telling the difference between disruptors and the companies being disrupted can give you a big advantage as an investor. And in my opinion, nobody does a better job covering big AI breakthroughs and the investing opportunities that come with them than ARK Invest. Well, a couple weeks ago, Kathy Wood released a special monthly video, where she and a couple ARK Invest analysts broke down their views on the big AI market. Here's a short clip for some context. AI has captured the imagination of the world, consumers and businesses. We've been AI everything and everywhere in terms of our analysis practically since the beginning of the firm. So every stock in our portfolio has been analyzed with that lens on. And to give you the best example of this, NVIDIA, 2014. We owned NVIDIA. We were exposed to NVIDIA. NVIDIA at that time was a $5 stock, and now it is a $400 stock. $5 and somewhere in the $5 to $10 billion now has scaled to a trillion. Uh, so now people do understand that AI is a big idea. So this is a big reason that I track ARK Invest's research and their investments. They were buying Nvidia stock back in 2014, and they were one of the first research firms to realize that GPUs would be useful for way more than just gaming. For example, before Tesla made their own self-driving chips, they used Nvidia's GPUs. And for years, these kinds of applications weren't priced into Nvidia stock. And ARK Invest spent those years buying the stock for pennies on the dollar. But they didn't keep this information to themselves. They actually released plenty of articles in 2016 and 2017 explaining their research and their reasoning for buying these mispriced stocks. And they published their trades at the end of every market day. Well, I've been downloading and keeping track of ARK Invest trades for about three years now which lets me see some pretty interesting patterns in their trades over long periods of time. Here, let me show you. Let's take a quick look at which stocks ARK Invest has been buying over the last quarter. This is the latest version of my ARK Invest tracker. A few people came back to me saying they had trouble using the old one, so I made this one as simple and as streamlined as I could. I left notes on every section right on the page, but let me walk you through it. ARK Invest currently has a little over $13 billion in assets under management which is up around 6% from the start of the quarter. We care about that because we want to see which stocks that Kathy Wood bought the most relative to the growth of her funds. Think about it this way. If a position in a stock only went up because her funds grew overall, that's not the same thing as her buying a specific stock hand over fist like she did with Nvidia five years ago. So this combined AUM number gives us a good baseline to compare individual positions against. So here's ARK Invest's biggest new positions for quarter two across all of their funds combined. Palantir, Meta Platforms, Taiwan Semiconductor, The Trade Desk, Pure Storage, and SoFi. If you want to know why they're buying these stocks specifically, make sure you watch until the end of the video because I'll show you straight from the source. Let me know in the comments if you see a specific stock that you want me to dive into first. Another useful thing to track is which stocks have the biggest increase in share count. Remember, the size of Kathy Wood's positions depend on the stock's price and how many shares she holds. She can't control the price, at least not yet, but if she's loading up on shares, that means that ARK Invest probably sees something that the market is missing about that company, regardless of how the stock is performing in the short term. So for example, they hold more shares of Joby Aviation than they did at the start of the quarter, even though Joby's stock price has gone up by over 65%. One thing to note here is that ARK Invest actually bought most of these shares in Joby about a month before the price jumped, so they could make a pretty penny if they sell those shares soon. ARK Invest also bought a ton of Teradyne, CrowdStrike, Cloudflare, and Prime Medicine over the last quarter, increasing their share counts anywhere from 40 to 80% in each position. So if you're interested in disruptive innovators, these are all companies you should put on your watch list and dig more into. 
By the way, if you want another great place to see all of ARK Invest's holdings in real time, check out Moomoo. Moomoo is a trading app designed to help advanced investors find great stocks at great prices. One of my favorite features is their institutional tracker. You can see which industries institutions are investing in, which stocks they hold the most overall, and which stocks they've been buying and selling most recently. You can even dive into specific institutions like Berkshire Hathaway or ARK Invest. You can see their trades across the entire firm and click a specific stock to see every single transaction and at what price. No wonder Moomoo has almost 20 million advanced investors on their platform. And right now, they're giving away up to 15 free stocks, each valued at up to $2,000 plus a $100 cash bonus and a free share of C3AI when you use my link to sign up, and a free share of Tesla or Google when you deposit at least $5,000. If you're trying to invest in AI, all these free stocks are an absolute no-brainer. All you need to do is download the app using my link, keep your funds at that level for at least 60 days, and enjoy up to 17 free stocks. But this offer ends very soon, so make sure to get started today. All right. Another thing I want to show you is which stocks ARK Invest sold the most. When they sell out of a stock that's going down in price, that indicates low long-term conviction because otherwise they'd be buying the dip. That appears to be what happened here with Insight, which has been on the decline pretty much all quarter. On the flip side, if they sell a stock that shot way up in price, that just means they're locking in gains because they have another stock to reinvest those gains into. That's what appears to have happened with some of their biggest positions like Shopify, Exact Sciences, and of course, Nvidia. Kathy Wood has been catching a lot of heat for selling out of Nvidia stock right before it tripled in price, especially since she's been such a big investor in them since 2014 and realized that they were such a great AI stock years before most of the market. But instead of just calling ARK Invest out for making what I think is a bad trade, I figured I'd show you their side of the story so we can learn from it together. Because at the end of the day, I'm not here to be right. I'm here to become a better investor. So to help me set the stage, I've edited down this quick clip from the same video, but this time it's Frank Downing, ARK Invest's Director of Research for Next Generation Internet. To help frame what's going on in the market and especially for investors, it's helpful to add some historical perspective here. When we look at the foundational shifts in computing architecture over time, you can look at the shift from the mainframe to personal computing and the internet that took place in the 90s. And the companies that delivered the hardware that was fundamentally required for that shift, Intel and Cisco, for example, did really well during that time period. But when you look towards the end of the decade, 2000, 2001, companies like Microsoft that were delivering the kind of new products and services with Windows and Office, Oracle on the database side, Microsoft actually surpassed Intel in revenue. And now 10, 20 years later is multiples of Intel's revenue. So the hardware was the necessary investment first, but the companies that were delivering the software experiences on top of it were able to generate a much more revenue after that initial investment cycle and at higher gross margins as well. And I think you can look at the next change and infer something similar, which is the transition from PCs to mobile computing where you had companies on a market cap basis like Qualcomm and Arm do very well around the 2010 period once the iPhone came out as this aha moment that mobile computing and smartphones were going to be a thing. Those companies did great. And then a lot of value accrued to the companies that deployed software and services on top of those mobile phones, be it Google or Apple services, really accruing a lot of that value that came after that initial surge in hardware. And I think following companies like NVIDIA since 2014, when people didn't really see the potential for AI, now that we've had the chat GPT moment, the fastest application to 100 million users ever, everybody is scrambling to invest in the hardware so that they can deliver these products and services down the road. So you can think of every purchase of AI hardware today going to fund some pro product or service that's delivered through software in the future. And so I think now that everybody is crowding into companies like NVIDIA, the question that we have is where is the value going to accrue next? So the most important takeaway here is that we've seen this pattern before. When the world shifted from mainframe computers to PCs, Intel and Cisco were the big names that accrued a lot of the value on the hardware side. But it was the software companies like Microsoft that took home the most revenues with the highest profits overall. And we saw the same thing when the world shifted from personal computing to mobile computing. 
Qualcomm and Arm were the hardware companies that won big, but it was Google and Apple who became trillion dollar companies thanks to their app stores and mobile software ecosystems. Today we're going through the same kind of pattern. Nvidia is the hardware company capturing a lot of value on the hardware side as we transition from CPUs to GPUs or from calculation to inference. But hardware is just the first wave. After that, we'll have device companies. Maybe that's Apple with their Vision Pro, or maybe it's another company that finds a new form factor for this new kind of computing. Only then should we expect a wide variety of new software solutions to get built on top of those new devices and the new chips that power them. Okay, so if Ark Invest knows this and they're already selling Nvidia stock, what the heck are they buying? To answer that, let's turn to another quick clip that I've edited down to just the essentials for you. This time, it's Will Summerlin, whose research at ARK Invest focuses on artificial intelligence, software as a service, and venture capital. So if we step back for a second and think about knowledge work as a category, human knowledge workers are paid about $32 trillion a year to do things that are increasingly automatable by AI. Imagine writing software code, creating spreadsheets, reviewing legal agreements. And we're already seeing this productivity uplift in software engineering. GitHub recently put out a study showing that software engineers using GitHub Copilot, their AI coding assistant, are twice as productive as software engineers who are not using AI. A company called Replit, which is a startup, recently said that up to 80% of new code on the platform is generated by AI coding assistants. And so that's a 5x productivity uplift. Software engineers make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in many cases, and we're already seeing AI more than double their productivity. So we think that's representative of what we're going to see across many job categories, from doctors to lawyers to software engineers. And when we think about the opportunity from an investment standpoint, we think that by 2030, AI could increase the productivity of knowledge workers by more than fourfold. That means AI software specifically would create more than $100 trillion in value. And if we look back historically at the value capture opportunity for software, enterprise software companies generally capture between 10 and 25% of the value created by their software. If we apply that to AI, $100 trillion in value creation means software companies should be able to capture between 10 and $25 trillion a year in revenue. So how do we actually pick the companies that we invest in? We really look at three variables. The first is proprietary data. The second is a distribution advantage. And the third is leadership of the company who understands the opportunity and is leaning aggressively into AI. We think the company's best position to capture the AI opportunity start with a proprietary data set that allows them to train or fine tune models specifically for their use case. But more importantly, the companies that we believe are best positioned have a data feedback loop. One analogy I like here with Tesla is a blue stop sign. So very few people know this, but there are a couple of places in Hawaii that actually have blue stop signs. And a human could probably intuit rolling up to the stop sign that it's a stop sign, right? But an AI model that's powering a full self-driving vehicle might not know that. It might roll up and say, well, that's not a stop sign, it's blue, and continue rolling on through. But if the human intervenes and presses the brake, it basically labels that event as a mistake. And the system learns over a couple of instances that blue stop signs are also stop signs. And so then if this were a Tesla, Every Tesla in the fleet would then re realize that blue stop signs are also stop signs. And that's a data feedback loop that's very powerful and hard to compete with. So that's proprietary data. Second is distribution. Companies that are already deployed within an enterprise are able to distribute AI features and products more easily than those who are coming in net new as a challenger. And so if we think about a company like Twilio, they already have most of the Fortune 500 as a customer. And so it's easy for them to go into their customers who are already using Twilio and upgrade their contact center software to include AI features and functionality. And so it's, in our view, an easier sell for a company like Twilio than it is for a challenger to come in and try to sell them an entirely new contact center solution. The third is leadership. And we really look for leadership that not only understands the opportunity, but is aggressively pursuing the opportunity. And one of the things that we've realized is Founders are actually better at this than most professional CEOs. So if you look across our portfolio, many of the companies that we invest in are founder led and the founders are willing to really see this as a chapter two, throw out what they knew before and start from scratch. And that's one of the things that we look for that we find compelling. So we're talking about a roughly 4x productivity boost to a broad range of highly paid professions like software engineers, lawyers and doctors, and that's going to have an insane amount of economic value. 
That's why I said that AI is a $100 trillion market opportunity at the start of this video, and future software companies are going to capture a large portion of that value. And if we look at my ARK Invest tracker again, we can see that ARK Invest is putting their money where their mouth is. Tesla, UiPath, Coinbase, Roku, Zoom, all of ARK Invest's top companies collect tons of proprietary data in their fields. All of them have big distribution advantages, whether that's Tesla's gigafactories and direct-to-consumer sales model, Roku's operating system being embedded in a wide variety of smart TVs, or Zoom already being on pretty much everyone's home and work computers. And almost all of these companies are still founder-led, which means their leadership still has the ability, the willingness, and the skin in the game needed to win their markets at any cost. I should also point out that companies don't need to be small to win big. Tesla, Meta Platforms, and Nvidia have all touched trillion dollar valuations. They all have tons of proprietary data, huge distribution advantages, and they're all founder led today. That's why I think they're still in ARK Invest funds while other mega caps are not. Whether you agree with ARK Invest stock picks or not, at least now you know what they've been up to over the last quarter. And now that I have my tracker up and running again, I'll be covering their research and stock picks way more often. And if you want access to this tracker for yourself, I've included a link for you in the description below as well. Don't worry, it's completely free. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is ticker symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.